multiplication tables all the way from 6 times 6 to 9 times 9. After a long lot of rote learning, it's very common for us to get a doubt how much is 7 times 8 in the units digit or in the tens digit. If you do get a doubt after a lot of rote learning, you are stuck. The way we figure out these multiplications or multiplication tables, we can work them out on the fly without having to remember anything. That is a promise. Let's see how. Well, let's begin with our 7 times 8. Now, one thing we recognize is that these numbers are very close to 10. Let me write so we can say 10 minus 3 gives us 7. It is this minus 3 which comes over here. So if we write minus 3 next to 7, what do we write next to 8? What do we write here? So all we have done is next to 7 we have written minus 3. Next to 8 we have written minus 2. Now what do we do? Our aim is to find out how much is 7 times 8. 7 times 8 has tens given by either of the crosses 7 minus 2 or 8 minus 3. And over and above this, we have 3 times 2 once. So 7 times 8 has 5 tens and 6 ones is 56. We start learning numbers from the visuals around us. We begin by one head, two eyes, five, nine, and one more finger, ten fingers, two birds. The visual for five. And visualizing big numbers, we represent one with the visual of a unit square that has one image. It happens to be a smiley face here, but it can be just about anything. When we join two such unit squares in a particular fashion, the outline becomes a rectangle that is twice as long as the unit square. And by joining such unit squares in a particular fashion, we can generate any number, a visual for any number in the form of a long rectangle. For example, this outline of the visual is a long rectangle that is five times as long as the unit square. So this is a visual for 5 and joining 10 such unit squares we generate a visual for 10. The outline of which is a long rectangle that is 10 times as long as the unit square. We see here a visual for 15 arranged in three rows each representing a 5. That is, it's a visual for 3 fives or 3 times 5. As a long rectangle of the same width as a little square, it will be very long. And this way of looking at numbers, visualizing numbers as rectangles, which is obtained from a specific way of joining unit squares has many advantages to explore and understand the nature of each number. We also write 7 times 8 like this. So in general, a multiplication of two numbers such as 7 times 8, we can say, is represented by the total number of objects in an array of 7 by 8. Here, we count these by the rows in a smart manner. If we can make up each row of 8 objects to have full 10 objects, 
by rearranging these objects in these two rows into two columns here in this fashion we see that we have rows full of tens which are easy to count the original seven rows this seven minus these two this seven minus this two over and above these tens we have these objects short rows three of them each of two objects so three twos of course we know it is 56 but this is exactly what we have learned in the method of crosses to figure out seven times eight by shifting out these three columns from here like this then the number of tens in seven times eight can be seen to be this eight minus this three and of course over and above these eight minus three tens we have these ones three times two ones this is what we mean by understanding the magic of the method of crosses starting from the very basics next we take up the case of multiplication of two numbers such as 8 and 13 where one number is less than a 10 while the other number is more than a 10 it can be rearranged to see that 8 times 13 is always less than 8 plus 3 tens or 13 minus 2 tens by the same 2 times 3 ones. Isn't it very interesting that we unravel the magic of the method of crosses in figuring out multiplication of any two numbers close to a 10? starting from the very basics such as 7 times 8 and rearranging them so that either the rows are full of tens or the columns are full of tens or 14 times 12 where both numbers are more than a 10 or multiplication of two numbers where one is less than a 10 while the other is more than a 10. Go ahead, try figuring out multiplications of any two numbers close to 10, starting from the very, very basics. And have fun.